Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to tackle one more example on finding global extrema. This will be similar to the last example, so this might be a good problem for you to first try on your own. We will, however, be treating the boundary components a little bit differently this time. Here, we're looking for the global max and min of the function fxy equals x squared minus xy minus x plus y squared plus 4. And we're doing this over the triangular plate with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 4. Just like in our last example, it'll be helpful to have a visual of this region to work with throughout the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these three points in the plane, 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 4. If you connect up the points, you'll see that we're optimizing our function over this triangular region, which maybe I'll call D. Just like before, this includes both the inside and the boundary. Well, you know the drill, folks. The global max and min could either occur at critical points or at points along the boundary. So let's start by finding the critical points of our function that lie on this plate. To find our critical points, we look at the partial derivatives fx and fy. The partial with respect to x is given by 2x minus y minus 1. And the partial with respect to y is given by minus x plus 2y. We need to figure out where these derivatives don't exist or where they're equal to 0. Well, come on, folks. These expressions are about as nice as they come. They're polynomials in x and y. They exist everywhere. So instead, we'll set both expressions equal to 0 and solve for x and y. We'll start with the simpler expression, which in this case is fy. If fy is equal to 0, then minus x plus 2y is 0, or in other words, x is 2y. Now we'll use this in our first equation, fx equals 0. That tells me that 2 times 2y minus y minus 1 is equal to 0, or in other words, 3y minus 1 is 0. This tells me that y is 1 third. Ah, but hold on, we know that x has to be 2y. So if y is 1 third, x is 2 thirds. We get a critical point of 2 thirds 1 third, which sure enough lies in our triangular plate. It's this point right here. Okay, our next step is to analyze the boundary of this plate. We're going to analyze our function separately along each straight line that makes up our boundary component, just like we did in the last lesson. So why don't we give these straight lines some names? We'll call this one a1, this one a2, and the slanted one we'll call a3. So let's start by looking at the values of our function along this line segment a1. The equation of a1 is y equals 0, right? It's the x-axis. And we're considering x values between 0 and 2. What's our function doing along this line segment? To find out, we're going to plug in 0 for y. We get the equation f of x0 equals x squared minus x plus 4. We need to determine where this function attains its global max and min for x between 0 and 2. Well, how do we do that? This quadratic looks kind of complicated, so I might not be able to just look at its graph like I did in the last video to find its global max and min. Instead, we'll think of this as a Calc 1 problem. After all, we're optimizing a single variable function over this closed interval. We know that the global max and min of this function occur at critical points inside the interval or possibly at the endpoints. So why don't we just find the critical points in the interval, throw in the endpoints, and at the end of the problem, we'll test all of these as possible locations for the global max and min of f of x, y. How do you find the critical points of this function? Ah, that's right. You take the derivative and see where it's 0 or doesn't exist. The derivative of this expression, f prime of x0, is 2x minus 1. That's going to exist everywhere, and it's equal to 0 when x is 1 half. So we have a critical point at 1 half and two endpoints, one where x is 0 and one where x is 2. So let's throw in all three of these points. We get 0, 0, 1 half 0, and 2, 0. We're going to test all of these at the end of the problem. All right, let's move on to a2. The line a2 can be described by the equation x equals 2, where we're considering y values between 0 and 4. What's our function doing along this line? To find out, we're going to plug in 2 for x. We get f of 2y is 2 squared minus 2y 
minus 2 plus y squared plus 4. If you simplify this, you should get y squared minus 2y plus 6. And oh no, once again, I can't tell just by looking at this quadratic where it's going to attain its global max and global min for y between 0 and 4. So I'm going to do the same trick as above. I'm going to look for the critical points in this interval. I'm going to throw in the endpoints, and we'll test them all at the end of the problem. To find our critical points, we look to our derivative. f prime of 2y is 2y minus 2. Now this exists everywhere, and it's equal to 0 when y is 1. Okay, now we also throw in our endpoints, y equals 0 and 4, and that gives us three more candidates to check. 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 4. You can see all six of these points labeled in our graph. Finally, we're going to analyze A3 on the next slide. Okay, let's see what's happening along A3 here. A3 is a line that passes through 0, 0, and 2, 4. So it has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0. Its equation is y equals 2x. And here we allow x to go between 0 and 2. To see what our function is doing on this line, we're going to plug in 2x for y. We get the equation x 2x is equal to x squared minus x times 2x minus x plus 2x squared plus 4. If you simplify this and combine like terms, you should get 3x squared minus x plus 4. Well, I think you know what comes next, folks. We're going to look for the critical points of our function for x between 0 and 2. We're going to throw in the endpoints, and we'll treat all of these at the end of the problem. To find the critical points, I take my derivative. I have f prime x 2x equals 6x minus 1. This exists everywhere, and it's 0 when x is 1 sixth. We know that y is going to be 2x, right? So if x is 1 sixth, y is 1 third. We also throw in the endpoints. x is 0 or 2. This gives us three points, 0, 0, 1 sixth, 1 third, and 2, 4. Two of those points we found previously, but we do have one new one. In total, we have seven candidates for the location of our global max and global min. Let's test them all. Okay, folks, with the help of a calculator, I found the value of our function at the seven points that we found in steps one and two. You can see that the largest value is going to occur here at the point 2, 4. Our function has a global max at 2, 4 with value 14. The smallest value is going to occur here at our critical point. We have a global min at 2 thirds, 1 third, and the value is 11 thirds. It's approximately 3.67. All right, let's take a quick look at the graph and make sure we're correct. So here you have it, the graph of our function over this triangular plate. You can see that we reach a maximum value over here. We have a height of 14 when x is 2 and y is 4, just as we found on the last slide. We also see that our function dips down to reach a minimum value somewhere around here, around the point 2 thirds, 1 third. So it seems likely that our answer checks out. The math works and you can see it in the graph. 